Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by our patrons like Mieru. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it would really help us out. Thanks for your support, guys. Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk FGO Wanted, where we talk about new and upcoming five stars, usually of the limited variety, but sometimes story locks, sometimes even just permanent unlocks, because who cares? Hey, you love five stars. Everybody loves five stars. Five stars for everybody. No, they're not doing that. They probably will never do that, but hey, here we are. So, a quick recap, because goodness knows when this will actually come out. I'm actually holding this one in the can. Uh, spoilers, because you can't tell from the thumb in the title, we're going to be talking about Da Vinci today, the servant. And uh, I don't, as of recording this, I should say, the banner's not actually announced. They will probably announce it promptly on the anniversary panel, which is in a couple days from the time I'm recording this. But, eh, don't know. So, I'm going ahead and shooting it now, so that whenever it drops, I can throw it up. So, obviously, you know, you'll know it when you see it. Anyway, here we are. FGO Wanted. We're going to talk about our normal format. We're going to talk about the actual real-life history or mythology of the character. We're going to talk about any lore that's specific to them and fate. And then we're going to talk about mechanics, what they're actually good for. And then we're going to talk about how rare they are. Not the arbitrary assigning of stars and... Uh, metallic rankings, but the actual how often are they on read-up. Spoilers, for Da Vinci it's not a lot. Which hurts me. But anyway. We'll cover all that. And we'll see if you want to roll this servant. Simple, right? I don't think there's any business to get out of the way. This is a classic example of one. If there's a limited servant who's coming out, we're going to talk about all the stuff that they do. So let's jump into the history. Leonardo Da Vinci renowned polymath. That means they know a lot of stuff from uh, born in the 1400s during the Renaissance, Italian, wildly famous, famous as an artist for works such as the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, Virgin on the Rocks, many, many portraits, also famous as a technical designer. Da Vinci's notebooks were scattered with lots of technical drawings for concepts like armored vehicles, ornithopters, solar power, double hulls and ships, lots and lots of other designs. So, very well-rounded, a perfect example of what was called the Renaissance man, the person who, you know, is involved in all of the pursuits of humanity, from artistic to technical. A real famous genius. We're not going to break down Leonardo's life from start to finish, just, you know, hey, have you ever read a book about art or taken a class on art or the humanities? You've probably heard of Leo. Probably Da Vinci. Imminently famous for lots of stuff. Alright. I usually like to go into a little more detail, but with ultra-famous characters like Leonardo Da Vinci, it's hard to do that, because we'd be here all day. Uh, personally, great fan of their works. Though, I would say I, uh, as a painter, I prefer Raphael, but hey, that's just... Anyway, we're not going to linger too long on any of the other history. Just know that, basically, Da Vinci was interested in just about everything and was good at a lot of them. Credited as inventing the tank, the helicopter, the parachute. Interested in all kinds of fields. Sometimes called the, the father of paleontology and architecture uh, and iconology or ichnology. It's got an ICH. It's the study of like trails and footprints and stuff. So yeah, no, super famous. Let's move on from that. Let's move into Leonardo da Vinci in FGO, because Leonardo da Vinci is an FGO original. So obviously, we gotta get the first thing out of the way. Da Vinci is a lady character. Kind of. So this is different from the normal way Fate does this, by just, oh, history recorded them as a man, but they were actually a lady. No, so, historically, Leonardo da Vinci was male, but when summoned as a servant because of da Vinci's own aesthetics and the incredible fame and mystery of the Mona Lisa, the summoned form Da Vinci takes is that of a lady who resembles the Mona Lisa. Da Vinci Chan for short. Actually, it's not really that short, but you know, that's how you can differentiate. So yeah, there's that. That's a thing. Kind of an interesting take that obviously, you know, Leonardo, despite being kind of a dirty old man personality-wise, you can tell this for some of the events, also super striving for that ideal of beauty, which forms the physical body. Also, Da Vinci is super important to the plot, 
as evidenced by the fact that we known she exists for a long time, way before she was playable, let alone summonable, because she was actually playable before she was summonable. And that is because Da Vinci is credited as the third servant, third servant summoned by Caldea, and Da Vinci fills an important technical role with a major workshop. They manage the in-game shop with lots of lovely lines that you hear all the time. Many other features. They are responsible for lots of uh, magical and technical construction and advice, and generally knowing lots of stuff that Da Vinci can exposit to you. Also important to note that Da Vinci's class is a caster, not just because of their knowledge of just about fucking everything, but also because it states in the profile, yes, actually, we're extending that this mastery of many crafts extends to magecraft. So, in Fae, Da Vinci was also a magus, which, yeah, it's, that's never leave that out there. Sure, makes sense. With that knowledge of everything and trying to understand the universe and stuff. It sounds right. So that's pretty important. Uh, da Vinci is a major supporting character. This is the first time they are playable in both the Seven Counterfeit Heroic Spirits event, which is where Jean Alter premiered, and then in the Camelot story chapter. Camelot's pretty recent, so we're not going to talk about the details, but, you know, Da Vinci does ride out with you and is playable a lot. Also, just in general, like I said, important to the plot because they're there. Uh, also, got some other interesting ties. It's, I think it's only tangentially mentioned in, like, some of the materials, but Da Vinci knew uh, Makiri Zolgan in life when they were both actually alive, uh, and you may recognize that name as the other name of uh, Mato Zakiri, I think it is. Uh, old creepy man Mato, who nobody likes, but showed up as not old and creepy or as creepy in London. So that was a thing. Didn't even realize that was a thing, did you? Well, it is. Uh, other than that, I mean, like I said, Da Vinci's and FG original is pretty deeply tied into the plot. They keep going as an important character. I don't think there's any other specific twists or turns, though, so uh, let's go ahead and jump into mechanics. All right, so those mechanics. Let's look at these stats. So you can see pretty typical star related stats for a caster, not super exciting. Casters don't normally deal with crits. That's kind of a niche thing. With those hit counts, with this typical caster deck, and of course with a very decent arts passive, this is a respectable amount of NP gain. Not that that matters for other reasons, which we'll cover when we get to active skills. So the important thing I want to note about Da Vinci is the core stats, attack and HP. So Da Vinci has the same attack as El Melo to and the same HP as El Melo to and also Tamamo, but unlike those two, she has an offensive NP, which does have an interlude. It's not listed here, but there is an interlude, which will increase the damage and the critical rate down. So much more able to capitalize that. The only ones that beat out Da Vinci in terms of attack are the more offensive-focused ones, the buster-focused ones, like Ilya, Sanzo, and Castor Nero. And in terms of HP, the only one that wins even more so is Scheherazade, which is... Obviously, it's own concern, because there's a lot of notes about Scheherazade's design not being great. So there's that. Decent hit counts, arts focused, gonna be pretty good at getting those things off. Now, Mo Universal, this is a fairly standard AoE NP, it's arts, it's got a pretty typical multiplier, but it buffs you with self-NP damage, obviously you have a passive to increase arts, and you've got defense ignoring damage, and of course that critical down. Very useful. So, you'll be doing a decent amount of damage, obviously it's not single target, but still, you'll do a decent amount of damage to the enemy, and it'll start an NP chain, though with not a lot of hits, you're not necessarily going to get a super big refund back, just, it's a thing. So, let's get into the active skills, which I think really tells you what you're going to use Da Vinci for. With that high HP, and most of these skills, Da Vinci is basically a tank who also wants to do damage. Basically, you will be taking a lot of punishment, and you will be popping NP regularly. So the first one is Inherent Wisdom EX, similar to Tesla, which actually I think they have a lot of similarities, but we'll, we'll get into that with some other stuff. Then you've got, and you apply Guts to yourself for sure, for three turns, up to 3k HP, which is not bad. Then you've got an 85% chance to increase your defense for three turns, and then to increase your NP strength for one turn. Uh, and these go both 20 to 30%. Now, that 85% is pretty good, but not perfect, though you can counter it with some servants like Ozymandias. But still, very decent. So you'll notice that gives you a sizable guts 
for several turns, it gives you a decent defense up for several turns, and then also even more NP strength, you know, we're talking an additive of 50% if you proc it at level 1 and then level 1 overcharge. So, very good to make that NP hit and to make Da Vinci stick around for a couple turns afterward. And then the second skill is Golden Rule Body, similar to Queen Maeve. Gives you two turns of complete debuff immunity, not one time, just two turns. Fuck you, debuffs. Gives you HP per turn for three turns, so at level 10 that's 3k total HP, again. Kind of a big deal with that HP stat. And then lastly, for three turns, you increase your NP gauge per turn by 10%. So you're just kickstarting it. Even if you're minding your own business, you're generating 10% NP. So, hey, guess what? You ignore debuffs, which can be very detrimental. You restore your HP by a not insignificant amount, all things said, per turn. And then you get NP. Hmm. And then the third skill is Pioneer of the Stars EX. Again, similar to Tesla. Also a little bit Drake. You increase your NP gauge by a scaling amount from 30 to 50%. You apply Ignore Invincible to yourself for three whole turns, and then you gain 10 critical stars. So, the 10 critical stars isn't really useful to Da Vinci, unless you're, like, soloing. Most likely that'll go to somebody else because casters don't have a great star weight. Although it can be used to synergize with, say, Nursery Rhyme, who needs stars to fuel self-modification. The most important thing here, I think, is, combined with the fact that her NP ignores defense, and then you can apply Ignore Invincible to yourself. That means that you're guaranteed to be doing that damage. And you get, as noted, a not insignificant NP battery. On top of you have another NP battery skill, and also you're a caster with Oodles of Arts cards. With an Arts bonus, even. So, you can see, you are going to be NPing a lot, or at least you're going to be NPing quick, and you should be able to get it back fairly frequently, if you're trying and if you're using your skills right. You're going to be enduring a lot of damage. Da Vinci can shed debuffs, or rather... Not, not clear debuffs, but ignore them for a certain amount of time. You can Guts if you time it right. You can also Defense Plus to try and maybe make you not use that Guts. So you can maybe get your gold. And then you're going to be, like I said, you're going to be popping your NP right. You can also, again, combine that with, you know, uh, starting Charge CE so you can very quickly jump to it, like, right away to clear waves. Very useful. Then Passive Skills, we talked about she's got a good Arts Passive. Territory Creation A means all Arts cards are 10% better. Just overall perfect. And then item construction A, it's okay, it improves by 10%, that really only applies to the critical rate decrease on the NP, which is okay, not ideal for all the time. But, truth be told, Da Vinci is a caster, so you will probably be fighting assassins with her, and much like writers, assassins like to crit, so hey, it could be useful. So all in all, yeah, you can see a complete package, a little bit different from lots of other SR casters, especially those that are out now. It's not the, the single focus... I will definitely pop my NP like Sanzo. I mean, she will, but not not at the quick turnaround levels that high-speed suture chanting. But not necessarily full support like El Meloi 2 and Tamo. And even then, like I said, because of her offensive NP, you can actually apply that high attack in a really big swing to clear waves. Very useful, I think. So let's talk about rarity, the actual kind. How common is Da Vinci? The answer is not very. There's going to be one for the first anniversary, which, as I said at the top of the video, isn't announced at the time I'm recording this. Whenever we get to the NA version or EN version of 8 million downloads, uh, which would be probably January next year-ish, would be about the time, or maybe sometime in early February for the event, she'll come back. Uh, supposedly she's in an FG of the stage a commemoration of Banner, which will be next year, well, would be next year in our time slot, but obviously we don't have FG of the stage, so... Eh? They'll probably do something with it, but I don't know specifically what. And then, probably the best is in a couple of years, or a year and a half, I guess, at this point, there will be a rerun of Da Vinci and the Heroic Spirits event, which will actually include Da Vinci and the Banner, along with Jean Alter. So that'll be a popular one you'll probably want to... Sounds good? All right. So let us go ahead and wrap up from there. All right, so that's the video. I hope you uh, have decided whether or not you want this character now. And we'll uh, just, you know, go on from there. I'm going to see you guys in the next episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and if you're new, subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. You always know when we post one of these. You never know. It could be a matter of life and death. Quartz is burning all in your pocket, and you just wonder, Studio Omega, do I need to roll? Answer for yourself. Watch a video. It's only like 15 minutes. And uh, don't forget to tune into our regular show, Let's Talk FGO, where we talk about topics like this in big, broad categories and stuff. And like I said before, I will see you whenever the next one comes out.